A giant construction crane floats over the pristine waters of the Florida Keys. It lifts huge boulders, then dumps them onto a fragile coral reef. This is not an attempt to destroy the reef, but an innovative effort to rebuild it. In 1989, two ships ran aground here. Their steel hulls sliced through the coral, killing much of the reef. I knew before I ever got on scene that the, the damage was going to be catastrophic. I really didn't want to get in the water because I knew what was going to be there. Harold Hudson, a biologist for the Florida National Marine Sanctuary, is the first to arrive on the scene. The seriousness of the damage is caused by the great weight of these ships. The reef structure was actually fragmented into just thousands of pieces, and as the ship moved over the reef, it ground the corals that were there into a literal powder. A coral reef is a living skeleton formed by tiny creatures called polyps. Though they cover only 1% of the ocean floor, reefs provide a home to a quarter of all sea life. The ship groundings have destroyed both the coral and the habitat for other ocean creatures. The loss is, at least for our lifetime, is permanent. Uh, we just cannot replace what has taken nature so long to build. It would normally take several thousand years before these reefs regrow. To speed up the process, an ingenious restoration plan is designed by coastal engineer Kevin Botch. The amount of rock we need on that side. Right. The big challenge there was coming up with a design that would look good and restore a kind of habitat that fish would enjoy. The coral uh, rubble scattered everywhere, and the result was a depression crater that continued to peel itself back. These holes, or craters, needed to be filled again. Bodge devises a system of modules he hopes will act as an artificial reef. He plots a series of preformed units to serve as anchors for new coral to grow on. What will happen if we shift 23 about six inches over to the left? At the reef, the repair team constructs the new foundation in only eight feet of water. It will have to withstand the pounding surf for hundreds of years to come. First, divers chisel away at the seafloor to make a level surface. Then an underwater vacuum is used to clean up the rubble. Since the shallow reef will be subjected to intense hammering from the waves, engineers must use strong concrete that can withstand the ocean's relentless force. The tops of the concrete slabs have been sculpted to simulate reef rock, making it more inviting for fish and other sea life. These nine-ton slabs are hoisted from a barge and carefully submerged into the ocean. They posed an incredible danger because the divers were working underneath or near these nine-ton objects that were being lowered to the seabed, then had to be bounced and moved around to become aligned perfectly. The divers put these concrete units together like a giant jigsaw puzzle. Then, a special underwater cement is injected into the cracks to ensure the slabs won't separate during a storm. Placement of the 40 modules must be carefully coordinated. To keep Bodge up to date on the reconstruction, on-site project manager Mark Schroeder inspects and videotapes the diver's work. Back on the boat, Schroeder sends the video via internet to Bodge in his Jacksonville office. I uh, sent you an image. I need you to pull it up real quick, take a look at it, and let me know uh, if that's what you had in mind. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, number 14 on the east end. Very nice. We needed to make decisions as quickly as possible, and the picture's worth a thousand words. Rising and falling tides complicate the job. At low tide, the repair barge is just inches above the reef, threatening to undo all the hard work and inflict even further damage. But their calculations prove correct. The tide rises and the barge stays clear of the reef. It has taken two and a half months to install the new foundation. But will it work? An initial inspection by local residents proves promising. Fish appeared on those rocks that I had never seen before. That is, they were coming to inspect the work and they seemed to approve of it, which I thought was kind of neat. Now the repair team must patiently wait to see if the coral will actually attach itself to the new reef rock. Two years have passed. Mark Schroeder and Harold Hudson return to the site to check on the reef's progress. With them is biological oceanographer Keith Spring. I hope to find a, a, an area that looks uh, virtually undistinguishable from the rest of the reef. As they explore the rebuilt reef, they discover that their work has blended perfectly with nature. Small new sea plants are blossoming. And schools of fish have made the restored reef their home. We pulled off a very unique and challenging project without doing any damage to the ambient reef system. And most importantly, we made a design which I think is very aesthetically pleasing. I believe that it's been restored probably stronger than it was before it was injured. The reef has a lot to offer and a lot to give us if, if we'll just uh, nurture and protect it. The success of this unprecedented project gives hope that other reefs can also be restored. Human ingenuity has put technology to use in preserving an invaluable natural resource.